Tonight's session of Messing Around in the Shop is uh, ably assisted by Bear and a Barrel Maple Nut Brown Ale from Handsome Lad Brewing in Winnipeg. There's no tasting notes as such, but it is made with real maple syrup for that extra Canadian touch. Today, I am messing around with this digital signage media player. It's LG's model NC1000-BAAB whatever that means. This particular one showed up at our office uh, back in 2012 and the sales manager had intended it to be used to display sales targets and stuff on the wall in the office. But shortly after that there was a reorganization and the uh, half the sales department got disappeared for some reason. Anyway, uh, in the box we got an easy setup guide. We have a CD-ROM we have it's like a metal mounting back plate. There's the main event. We've got uh, is that a serial cable? Yeah, a power cord, some zip ties and screws, and the actual device itself. Oh, and a couple of USB sticks. One marked 321 and one marked 321B. I don't know what those mean. Maybe the manual will tell us. Anyway, here it is. I'll just anonymize the phone number of the company that my company bought it from. Um, fairly sleek little box. A bit of weight to it. A nice splashy racing stripe on the front of it. Cool. LG logo. What's this say? Windows embedded standard. Oh, wow. After a quick censoring of the serial number, we can see that this particular unit was made in November 2010. Around back, an interesting collection of connectors, RS-232 serial, a uh, D-Sub Mini, which is, you know, VGA type thing, optical, a USB there, another USB down in there, HDMI, Mini Express card, oh wow, uh, LAN, USB, 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 and a 4-in-1 slot down below the power, hmm, oh, and a line out, which is presumably audio, that looks like a little pushy button there. Right. So, back before the advent of the Raspberry Pi, things like this is what you would use to turn a TV or monitor or display of some sort into basically a digital sign. Now, you know, everybody throws 50 or 100 bucks at Raspberry Pi and uses one of those, but this was the type of thing that was used back in the day. And I am curious to see what's inside it. I could look it up, but where's the fun in that? In the back corner, there's a couple of screws here. One on this corner. And one over on this corner. Looks like there's some threaded holes on the uh, red bit there that would be for mounting that uh, bracket, this bracket here, so you could wall mount the thing. Or maybe mount it onto the visa mount of a back of a monitor or something like that. That doesn't do anything for me. Well, okay, let's remove more screws then. Let's keep removing screws until something comes out. Like I said, I could look this up, but I'm going to uh, do the exploring first, and eventually I may look it up if I run into a dead end, but I think it's more fun and more interesting this way. Those screws are kind of really in there. Wow. And they're lengthy. Oh, that pops that whole module out. A bunch of different chips. I'm not going to look too closely at those. Diodes, inductors, so there's some power stuff going on on there. Cool. And on this side, oh, we have a cooler. We have some heat pipes from whatever's down there. Um, that's just kind of hovering there. We have a SanDisk board in here which is probably some kind of memory, I'm guessing. Let's see underneath the sticker here. Well, it says SSD, so that's pretty obvious what it is. What is that? Is that a BIOS battery, or is that it's two pins, maybe? Or is it a thermal sensing device? And then there's a couple other boards underneath there. Wow, that is dense. There's a lot going on in that little module. But that doesn't get us any closer to getting into the main event here. Well, there we go. So that just kind of pushes forward and lifts off. Nice metal shielding in there. 
There's the cage where that card came out of. Wait, is that is that the whole computer there? Or design? And this is just a, an I.O. board and that's power supply over there? Oh, cool. So the power supply just on pins 1, 2, 3 is 12 volts and pins 4, 5, 6 has ground coming out here. So that's just 12 volts. Okay. Ah, there's some information up there. It's a 4 amp 12 volt power supply. Sure. Um, universal input, anywhere from 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. Let's just yoink that guy out of there to take a look at the underside. I'm expecting it to be fairly, uh, fairly reasonable, given that LG is, you know, no slouch of a company. But we'll just take a peek at the underneath, just for completeness. Yeah, that's it. So there is the transformer there that's going to separate the high voltage and low voltage side. Um, nice line indicating the gap, fairly wide gap. That I think is the narrowest point there. And that's the opto isolator and it's got a slot under it. It's a capacitor goes across and it's got a slot under it. Yeah, pretty decent layout. And then over here, which is, well, that's the bridge rectifier. Okay. So that's nice. They're keeping the AC and the DC separated on the bridge rectifier. Cool. Yeah, it looks like some thoughts gone into this power supply. I approve. Rather convenient that this uh, little monitor showed up not too long ago. So I should be able to plug it into the... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, there's an HDMI output on there. Good. And uh, we'll power this thing up and see what happens. So the mouse and keyboard plugged in. Now we'll see what happens when they do that. Turned on. Well, the fans moved a little bit. Okay. Okay. After letting it boot up for a while, we get to this screen. And I've got a mouse plugged into it, and that's working. So let's just uh, welcome to the SuperSign Network Setup Wizard. I have to install the SuperSign Manager on my program, on my computer. Except for that's a Windows program, I'm guessing. And no, I'm not going to do it. Next. Player name. Okay. Next. A real tech network connection. All right. Is there an Ethernet? Yeah, there is an Ethernet jack on there. Okay, cool. Next, let's let it grab a dynamic IP address. Auto setting the server stuff. Sure. Connect to a network. Okay. The Super Sign Manager. So let's just connect my LAN to it and see if I can find it, I guess. Maybe that one? I think, yeah, the 40s are my DHCP addresses. So I'm going to guess that that's it. Or not. Well, that doesn't do very much. Let's just see uh, what's on these USB sticks that came with it. Maybe that'll give us a clue. Because I don't have a CD drive on my workshop computer, you see. So I can't even and install their Windows only software on my Linux computer. Maybe there's something useful on these. That looks like a Linux boot disk. Hello. Okay. What's the other one look like then? Also run, looks like a Linux boot disk. Hmm. So why would there be a couple of Linux boot disk USBs shipped with something like this? Well, let's plug one of them in and fire it up and see what happens. I don't know. While I'm waiting for the thing to boot up onto that uh, one USB stick, I put the other one back on my computer and just started looking around and... Ah, ha, ha, it's got Puppy Linux on it, which is one of the tiniest distros you can get. However, this is not going anywhere past that powering up screen, which is a little bit annoying. But the fact that it will boot from a live USB gives me an idea. The other thing that I did is I went and made an L Ubuntu uh, boot drive of my very own. So let's plug that in and see what happens. Well, I can't run this live though. I can only install it. Uh, well, let's go through and do some tests first. Let's run the memory test. See what happens. So what has it got for memory while it's doing this? 
Um, well, the clock is uh, 1.6 gig. Uh, it has 24K of L1 cache, 512 of L2, and 766 megs of RAM, I guess. It's busy testing over there, and no errors. So this is going to take a while. Oh, it's an Intel Atom CPU. Okay, Intel Atom 330 CPU at 1.6 gigahertz. Yeah, this test is going to take a little while. I'll come back in a second. And while that memory test is happening, let's go and look at the actual manual for the thing online. Or I guess the, the product page for it at LG. It is discontinued, which doesn't surprise me for something that was made in 2010. The specs it has, as we found out, an Intel Atom 339 processor, 1.6 gig. 533 megahertz front side bus came with windows embedded standard 32 gig sata ssd ah that's what that little sand disk guy is sure it's got a bunch of usb 2 ports on it it's got a realtek 10 100 ethernet card in it um it can take oh that four and one card is sd or memory stick or any of these things okay uh, the digital audio is SP diff 5.1. Cool. Serial port. Okay. And it can talk uh, VGA or HDMI from an NVIDIA 1920 by 1080, which is perfectly cromulent for the era. So this other manual that I found that was linked from that one shows that the main memory is either a 1 gig or a 2 gig of DDR3. Okay. And the SSD could be anywhere from 8 or 16 or 32 gigs, depending on what it was configured with. I'll we'll have to take a look closer at that. And here's putting all the brackets on. Oh, okay, so that bracket goes onto the back of the monitor, and then this clamps onto there. Oh, all right, clever. So it seems that the Windows install was customized, so we don't have direct access to the Windows, but that's okay. I think I'm going to install my Wii Linux distro on here anyway, just for the fun of it. And there it's done. Well, it's done the first pass anyway in 17 minutes with zero errors. That's enough for me. So, oh, as you can see, I've made my choice. L-Ubuntu, lightweight Ubuntu, it is. This is going to take some time. Once it's, uh, once it's finished installing and configuring and everything else, We'll just take a quick look at the specs on this uh, unit. I mean, we've already seen them in the manuals and stuff and on the website, but let's just make sure that this one is, in fact, what it says it is. It's a couple hours later, and here we are with the first boot into the new installation. Woohoo! Wow, that is a clean desktop. There's nothing there. Let's see what we've got installed. Okay, some tools. That. Firefox. Office stuff, sound and video, system tools, preferences. Cool. Let's see if it wants to work. Nah, we'll upgrade later. I upgraded, or I installed just to 1804, just because that was one that I happened to have lying around. But There we go, we have a Firefox. How powerful this swing is. Probably not very. No, it's really slow. But it does work. So as we can see, we're using over half of that 8 gigs. <laughs> but whatever. That's, uh, that's not bad for a free machine. So there's the system information that we get out of this thing. As we knew before, it is an Atom 330 at 1.6 gigahertz, one processor, two cores, four threads, LG's motherboard, 1280 by 800 graphics at the moment, and then there is that uh, SATA SanDisk drive. Cool. Oh, and uh, yeah, NVIDIA audio. Ha! Nifty. Core temperature is running at 57, 54 and 58 right now. And I can't feel anything on here. This is like room temperature on the cooling fins. This heat spreader going into the heat pipes is just barely warm to the touch. You wouldn't even know it if you weren't looking for it. There's the four threads. Okay. It's picked up an IP address with no issues. That's cool. 
So it's not the most powerful thing in the world, but that's fine. I don't uh, need it to be for a literal free computer. But I think it may work for like that home assistant kind of stuff. Maybe it can run like that because it's not taking a lot of power. It's quiet. It's only got the one fan on it. I think that's uh, I think that's a win for a free computer. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was uh, not where I expected this one to end up, but you never know when you start these things. Um, thanks for watching. As always, questions and comments down below. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you later.